So today's project, new shock mounts. These ones are okay, but this piece right here, I want it to angle down a little bit because when the shock's at the outside hole, no problem, but when it's in the inside hole, the shock cap gets pretty close right here. It doesn't hit, but a little bit more room will be nice. Also, there's this hole right here that's gonna go into a brace that goes from tower to tower. But I decided to change that a little bit too. I'm gonna put two more holes, one there, one in the center, one here because there's also another piece that connects shock to shock, making it a double shear mount. So I just figured more bolts better. And originally I was gonna do a one piece brace, but I figured I'd make little brackets, do a two piece. So you have a bracket and then the support and then another bracket. So I guess technically that's three pieces. So this way here, when someone buys one of these, they can easily customize it themselves just by making these links make them longer or shorter if you want and part of the fun of having an rc car is being able to modify it however you want the reason why i originally made this straight i did think about the whole angle thing but if you look this part's a little towards the top so if you want to change ride height you just unbolt this and flip it around so i didn't think that'd be that necessary so i drew up some new parts in cad got these right here the setup sheets all the programs are on here different setup sheets so right now I got to power up the machine and before I do that I got to turn the air compressor on because these machines use air and electrical and I also have to run a warm-up cycle because it's kind of cold in the shop and a warm-up cycle takes about 20 minutes so I'll show you that real quick so I'll turn the compressor on I'll let the compressor run for a minute before I power up the machine just to build air pressure. Also doing some maintenance work on the monster truck, getting it ready for the 24 season. I already started booking shows for 24. There's some fuel in it now. Normally I drain the fuel out, but it's pretty cool. A couple weeks ago, this truck was used in a music video. So I'll give you more details on that. Once the video comes out, I'll share it with you guys. I can't really share it right now because the video's not out yet. So wouldn't it be too cool to do to the artist to put anything out there before official videos out. Our compressor ran long enough. Let me power this thing up. I'll show you how this works. Power on. Machine's a little messy because I was using it last night. Okay, it's doing stuff. Lights on. All right, so right here it says open the door. Turn emergency stop. Anytime I shut the machine off, I don't know if you have to do this, but I hit the emergency stop first. That's what I was always taught to do. Press power up, which is right here. Just holds the machine. Okay, we got a green check bar. Now press cycle start to run a program. I press handle jog for manual operation. So I'll put handle jog. I'm gonna run a warm up program. I just like to have the vice in the middle when I do that. You don't need to, it's just something I do. Everybody's got their own things they do when they're building stuff. So now I come over here, I got a warm-up program already in this machine. So I hit list program. And right there, spindle warm-up. I always do a warm-up all the time. Some people say you don't have to unless you're running this thing fast, but I'd rather just always warm it up. So now select program, go to memory. I just like to look up here and verify that that's the program in there. It's like the start and it gives me a message. Your machine is cold. Run a warm-up program before running the spindle at high speed or you may damage the machine. Even though I'm not really running this at high speed, I like to do it anyway. So the start. And there we go, it just runs the spindle at different speeds. It'll go slow and speed up each time. It takes about 20 minutes. So in the meantime, what I'll do is start prepping all the material. I take a look at my setup sheets tells me the size of the stock I need and everything. So I'll get everything measured out, cut on the bandsaw, and then we'll run this program. Okay, so warm-up's almost complete. Right now the spindle's going to 10,000 RPMs. 
So the warm-up program just increases the spindle speed, 10,000 RPMs is the final speed, and it goes for 200 seconds. And that's the dwell right there, so it's got 120 seconds left to go. Then I can load some parts in here. I'll show you how the probe works, and then make the parts. So I already made one off camera, just to make sure the program's right. Everything looks good so far. I did this is op one, op two. I still have to put the holes in the side. So now I'll make the second one. I got the piece already loaded in the vise. I made sure everything's nice and clean and sitting on the parallels. So now I gotta put the probe in so I can find zero. In this case, zero is middle of the part for op one. So right now I'll just put the probe in so I gotta close the doors. So the probe is tool number 31. So I'm gonna to come to MDI, T31, tool change forward. It's gonna grab the probe. So now I just gotta jog the probe down so the tip of the probe is just over this piece. So I come over to handle jog. I'm gonna go X. Z. And on the Haas control, there's a Z up and down, and you can hit either one. So I just jog it down until it's about a quarter inch above the part. I want to get that thing as close to the center as possible. So that's good from here, now I'll come around the side. Check through here, and everything looks good. So this is my offset page, so I'm gonna hit F4 to go to the work offset, F3 for probing actions. Right up there is rectangle block. This is set up with touch screen too, you can turn it off and on. I have it on, I use it sometimes. So I'm gonna enter. And right here, first thing is work offset. It's already on G54, which is what I want. And I just go down the list. Pro Z, yes. Z surface. So we'll go to that one. I'm gonna go minus 0.25. Enter. And that puts the value in right there. X. That's the distance from here to here. Which I already know is four inches. So four point enter. Y, there to there, and I know that's 1.5. And then Z, that's how far down I want it to probe, so minus 0.25, enter. And then I just double check, make sure everything's good. So now there's two things I could do. I gotta close the door. So two things I could do, I can either hit cycle start right now, which will run in MDI or just as a habit, I always hit F4 and then output to MDI. And this touch screen. You don't have to do that. If you're doing a ton of parts, quicker just hit cycle start, but it's just a habit I have. So 25% rapids. Now I'll hit cycle start and it's gonna probe that. It's gonna find zero. Okay, so now this thing's at zero. Having a probe is awesome, otherwise I'd be setting these manually take forever. It's much, much faster and more accurate. So now, handle jog, Z, and I'm gonna jog this thing up to there. I just go very carefully because I don't wanna hit the probe, just make sure you go in the right direction because mistakes are easy to make. Close the door. So come over here, list program. So here are my programs. I got the USB drive in there right now. So right here are the different programs. And this is 
Shock Tower version 2 Op 1 is what I want, which is right there. Select program. Memory. Now hit cycle start. It should grab the face mill. Okay, op one is finished, and that's what it looks like. It's just an air hose blow thing out of it. And that's op one right there. So now I'll take this out of the vise. I'll pull this piece out of the vise, and then I'm gonna put it in this right here. It's called a one, two, three block. And what that does, it allows me to program zero for the second op. Okay, so right here I got the one, two, three block. It's called one, two, three because it's one inches by two inches by three inches, and they're all very precisely ground. So I have the probe jogged over this corner. This piece is a vice stop, and that stops this block. So once I probe this, I take this block out and I put my part in, and I know everything's in the right position. So it's a little bit different probing action because it's on the corner. So right here, I'll F4. That'll bring me back over the work offset. F3. So right there, I'm at the rectangle block that I used before. I want this one right here, outside corner. So I'm in the G54 work offset. Now I have to pick a corner. I'm gonna use that one up there, which is number four. So I'll hit four, enter. X, that's the distance I want to go in X. I want to put 0.25, enter. Now it's for Y, which is going to be the same thing, 0.25, enter. And then Z, how far down you want to go. Minus 0.25, enter. So I just look over everything, make sure it's right. And like before, I could just hit cycle start right now but I'm just in the habit of hitting F4, output to MDI, and then cycle start. So right now the probe is directly above the corner. So now I just gotta find one more surface, which is the top surface, the Z surface. So I'll come back over to here, hit handle jog, X, move it over a little bit, Y. Move it over a little bit, close the door, F4, F3. So now up here, I'm gonna use this one, which is single surface. Enter. 54, come down, and now, because it's a single surface, I want the Z. Z, enter. Now it's asking how far down I wanna probe. Minus, 0.25, enter. Verify everything's there, F4. And now it's gonna just find the Z surface. Okay, there's that. Handle jog, Z. Go slow just to make sure we're going in the right direction. Yep. So F4 to go to work offset. So right there is the Z. So now I'm gonna take this one, two, three block out of here and put the part in set up for op two. 
So now I got the part all loaded up and right there you can see the vice stop is pressed against the part. And what I want is because I used the one, two, three block and I probed the top corner, I want to make zero the bottom corner of this part. So I'll show you how I do that. So right here I'm at the work offset page and you can see right there the Z is highlighted. And right now the Z value is minus 18.3696. I want it to be minus point minus 19.3696 so what i got to do is add minus one to the value so i just come down here minus one point and if i look right there enters add the value enter and it says right here yes and now the value is correct so i come to list program and now i want shot tower version 2 op 2 which is right there so i scroll down Select program, memory, now it's right there. So now I just hit cycle start and we should be good to go. Just gonna grab the face mill. So this is a quarter inch end mill. Let's just put in the features in the back side of the part. This is just the finishing pass. Now it's gonna grab a drill. Drill the two holes. Now it's grabbing the chamfer. I'm gonna turn the coolant off for a second so you can see this. So this part right here, it's just barely cleaning up the edge just to make sure it's not sharp. I didn't want to do too much of a chamfer. Same thing right here, it's just barely breaking the edge. Whenever you're making parts, you just make them look the way you like them. I guess a machinist in a way is kind of an artist. So it's just barely touching the edge, just so it's not sharp. So now it's doing the holes, and it's chamfering the holes a little more than it did the edge, just to look a little better, I think. Just gonna do the center hole. And then those outer holes. And that's it. Op 2 is complete. Project complete, shock mounts installed. Looks pretty cool like that. You can see the three holes now as opposed to just the one. Being at an angle, definitely help with the shocks. So now that that geometry is complete, that's what it's about, all about making little changes just to make things as nice as you can. Now I can finish the axle housings because I couldn't really finish those till I got that geometry how I wanted. I was gonna make the pieces that go there, the little brackets for the top support, but it's getting late. I already have them programmed out, but I'll leave that as a project for another day. So anyway, take care. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Hit the bell, bye.